How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be looking at a highly requested tool that I just, I don't know why I never made a video on it. We're going to be talking about Maltego today or Maltigo, whatever you call it. We're going to be doing that today and then we're also going to be doing chaining friends, I guess, using different social media sites uh, to find more info about someone. Uh, so Maltego, for those that don't know, is kind of an API aggregator. I don't know a better way to put it, but basically, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, but you can put things in here like people, images, blah, 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 and you can make chains of association. I think, I don't know what it's actually called. I, I'm, I'm just going to call it chains or association chains or chains of associations. I don't know, but we're going to, it's basically like this person has a connection with this person or this thing or this place or whatever, and you're able to chain it all together to build out a larger picture. There's things in Multego that you're able to do automatically. They're called transforms, and it's nothing more than just API calls to various websites, but they make it super easy to run. So anyway, let's get into Multego and friend and whatever, association chaining. Okay, so we are gonna take a look, and apologies, it's like the next day or a couple days after the intro of the video. Uh, I made the mistake of hitting stream instead of record on OBS, so I filmed the entire segment of this video and didn't record it, rip in peace. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna be doing a few things. Like I said, we're gonna be uh, looking into Maltego a little bit. I'm um, not going to get too deep into what you can do with that, but we are going to be opening up Maltego, running a few transforms, and then building connections manually. Uh, and we're also going to be doing some manual analysis on Facebook, and I'll show you how to view friends without, I guess, or how to view friends on restricted accounts. Different ways you can do that. So anyways, we'll go ahead and open up Maltego. Maltego, Maltego, I've heard it called all sorts of things. So Maltego. Maltigo CE is the community edition, and basically, uh, this is the free version. If you are working for a you know police force or any sort of, um, I guess, non-personal use of Maltigo, you have to pay for it. So I would advise that you pay for it if you're going to be using this for actual investigations. Uh, so what you see right here when you open a Maltigo is the transform hub. Uh, transform is the way Maltigo calls APIs. So the way it works is when you run a transform in Maltigo, it's actually calling out uh, an API call. And APIs, I'm not going to get into what APIs do, but it's basically, it's like you go on Twitter, instead of having the UI show up, it's just the raw data that you're requesting and you can filter it down and all of that uh, to show certain things. It's I could probably get into like Postman and all of that in a different video, how to use that and Tableau and Kibana. Anyways, uh, so this is the transform hub. You can install uh, certain transforms. You can pay for certain transforms as well, uh, such as the ones down here, like FireEye, Threat Connect, and all that. Uh, for my personal use, I'm just going to be using the standard transforms, uh, the case file entities, social links, community edition, and Shodan. I have those ones installed. You can install whatever ones you want. Just keep in mind, you do need an API key for some of those. Let's go ahead and open up a investigation uh, or a new graph. So you'll go up here to next to the Maltego logo um, and you'll create a new graph. So you click on that and it'll bring this up. So you see on the left-hand side, we have the entity palette, or palette. Uh, which contains all sorts of goodies here, like domain name, location, person, URL, Bitcoin address, device, uh, incident. And all of these aren't going to have transforms to them, but the whole purpose of Maltego is to build a, a picture of something. Like I said, you'll get things like an incident, a meeting, a gang, an organization, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we will just use one of these as an example. So I will pull... Um, net block. I'll just pull up a net block right here. And I believe I've actually never tried this in a CIDR notation. So I'll put that right there and then we can just run transforms. Now the way that works is you just right click and then it'll pull up the transforms link right here. You can run all of them or you can run certain ones or you can even run specific ones. So running all transforms will run um, a search on that net range I put right there against the standard transform CE, Shodan, social links. If you want to view any specific ones uh, or run specific ones, you can either just click on the arrows right there to run that specific set, or you can click on it 
and well I guess this one it was a bat well I know that's a good example so you'll click on uh, find an entity properties click on that and you can run uh, just email addresses for that net range uh, but for our case we are just gonna go back clicking right there and we're just gonna run all transforms actually that's probably a bad example that's a huge uh, IP range made the mistake for an example I'm not gonna use such a huge IP range. I'm just going to do a website. Throw a website right there and I'll put in shodan.io and we're just going to right click and run all transforms. And those pops means that there are responses. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff here. Now to move around the graph, you can't just like drag and click around. I'm sure I, I, you might be able to. I'm, I'm not aware that you could do that, but this little thing over here, this like little zoom box is how you move around and then scroll in and out to you know, scroll in and out. So we can get some basic info here, such as like Google Analytics ID numbers, um, any associated technologies that Shodan IO is built with. Uh, they're behind Cloudflare. Uh, we get some DNS names, subdomain names, you know, the Wayback Machine. So you can see uh, previous renditions or whatever you call it of Shodan during previous times. Sometimes you'll get people, sometimes you'll get phone numbers. Uh, so like right here we have support at shodan.io so now i'm running transform specifically on this uh, email address it's validated the email does exist i don't know how exactly it does that but it did that you can see that uh, support at shodan.io was on a pastebin link um, other websites where that email is associated with or that email is in the website i guess you'd say um, but yeah, and you can go down the rabbit hole. You can put in other people's email addresses. You can um, obviously, I, like I showed you earlier, I have the have I been pwned transform enabled. So if that uh, email address was to have been pwned, it would show up here. So I'm actually going to run my own email address that has been pwned. So there you go. I put in my email and I tried to hide everything, uh, but I ran it just on the have I been pwned uh, transform and we got some results right here. We got PDL, B2B USA businesses, verifications.io, uh, pastebin link, and drizzly.com. Fun stuff. So, with that, that is a very basic intro into Maltego. So, let's get into Facebook. Facebook, I have not talked about on my channel much at all because, well, Facebook really sucks at automated scraping of data. Um, but there are some manual techniques that you can use to gather the information that you need. So I picked a random person. I have no association with this person. Um, I'm not going to try to dox them. I just want to show you techniques on how to find people's friends and build associations, which you can then in turn punch into Maltego to build out a map. So we have this person, Lindsay, right here. Uh, their account is somewhat privatized. It's not super secure, but it's secure enough where I can't see their friends list. I already checked. I see all friends. I click on see all friends and I can only see followers. Uh, anyone can follow anyone if they have that feature enabled. So viewing that data is not really helpful. I want to find people that are associated with Lindsay. So let's put a hypothetical scenario here. Let's say Lindsay was involved in a very serious crime and we want to find any associates of hers that, that we could interview or interrogate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, she's on the run, but we want to find people that are associated with her. So a few things we can do right away. We find that person's Facebook. It's usually not too difficult to find a, a criminal's Facebook. Sometimes they'll use different names that aren't their names. But if you're able to find someone that might be related to them or anything like that and pivot on their friends list, I'll show you pivoting. Uh, it's not too difficult to find someone's Facebook. So anyways, let's say Lindsay uh, is a person of interest. So we're going to gather some very basic intel on her right now. So the first thing we see is that she has a family. She has three kids and a husband. Not that unusual, but it's other pivot points we could go off of. We could try to find her husband's Facebook account. Maybe her kids have a Facebook account. Now, the reason why that matters is because if, let's say, Lindsay has a very secure Facebook account, you can't view anything about her, but you can see things like, you know, people that have reacted to her one and only photo, and you see like the last name matches up. You go into their account, and their Facebook is wide open. You have more pictures of her, maybe a tag location of where she was at, etc. You get the point. 
uh, it's all about pivoting if you want to get more information. So, uh, like I said, we got some relatives right there. We have some very basic intro, uh, info about her. She's an exec executive consultant at this company. You can plug that company into Maltego. You ran transforms against it. Agent at this insurance group, same thing. And same thing with the third one down there. Followed by 87 people. Really doesn't matter that much. Anyone can follow anyone. But do keep in mind, if you do friend someone on Facebook, there's there's a slim chance you actually might follow them as well. So keep that in mind. Probably that 87 number right there are probably people that are friends with her. Uh, we see that she donated to this foundation. So Lindsay donated to Sarah Person's birthday fundraiser. Uh, so she might have an association with that person uh, as well. So let's get into her photos. So we'll pick a family photo. So family right there, 434 people reacted to it, uh, which is a lot to go through depending on the, you know, I guess how, how, how much of a value of a target she is. Um, you would probably want to scrub through all of that. It's a lot of manual work, but the first thing that I would check for are comments. Uh, comments usually indicate that they have to be friends with someone. In this case, I can write a comment here on my Sock Puppet account. But if that comment section is not available and you can see all the people commenting, they have a friend relation with her on Facebook. So we see the comments. You could see the conversations that they're having. Does it seem like they would be friends? Does it seem like a stranger? Really depends. Like if you could tell it might be an inside joke, they probably know each other a little bit more than just a random person saying, nice family. I don't know what you'd say. God, I'm so awkward for that, but you get the point. That's where the intelligence portion of OSINT comes in. You got to kind of use your best judgment to build that connection. So let's say that we were able to find an association, like her friends, her friend group is really bad. Uh, let's just click on this person's Facebook. Let's open it up. I, I, I'm shooting in the wind right now. I don't know if her friend group is open or not. Uh, 703 friends, so we can go there. If you see the number on the friends, that means you can view their entire friends list. So what we will do is we will just type in, there she is right there, top right. So, and you see the add friend portion is not available. That's because I don't have a second degree connection with her. So uh, we have confirmed that Erica Fox and this Lindsay person are friends on Facebook. So we built that connection, but we had to pivot a little bit. So let's say that the friend group is, you know, her friends list is just completely locked down. You can't get any info on her. There is a sneaky little trick that I don't know how often could work, but then again, uh, investigations widely differ. And you might be able to use this technique to find associations with people. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty cheaty. And I, as a privacy aspect of it, I wish it would go away, but from an investigative standpoint, it's a pretty cheaty trick. So Venmo, I'm sure we have all heard of Venmo, at least in the United States. Venmo is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, pay network thing. You can pay someone for like dinner, you just pay them. It's ran by PayPal. Uh, the one downside to Venmo from a privacy perspective is that your friends list is completely public and you cannot hide that. It is public by default and well, that's the only option other than to delete them. Uh, I believe you can also sign up with Venmo with your Facebook account. So what that will do is actually import your friends list from Facebook, depending if the people have Venmo as well, uh, but that will open up their Facebook friends list group. So we'll go ahead and sign in. So here we go. We have loaded up her Venmo account. Now, what you can do is that you can actually search people on Venmo. So it's not like I stalked her down and brute forced her uh, username. No, I just searched her on the search people thing up there and I was able to find her and correlate the image she has on there versus the Facebook image. Uh, now you could see more interactions that would be more personal. Uh, usually you wouldn't just pay someone a stranger or anything like that unless you're Mr. Beast. Uh, but you could easily assume that she paid Thomas Miller for an Uber ride. They were probably together on Saturday, which was what day? They were probably together on November 14th, and it was around the 11.33 time. So what I would do from an invest investigation standpoint is I, I'm able to find their Venmo account. Let's say they committed a murder or a crime at 10 a.m. on that same day. Well, now I'm able to say, Okay, well, Lindsay is on the run. She's a flight risk. Um, hmm. 
let's talk to this Thomas Miller guy because they talked to each other an hour and a half after the crime. Then you're able to pivot from there. Another thing you could do, you could see on the far right, Lindsay's friends, 369. That's a little bit more than what we had initially. If we go back to her account, which if we go to see all friends, da -da -da -da, you don't see any of them. You only see followers. So we have 369 people that we can scrub through. Unfortunately, Venmo does not have an API to automate this. Um, but you can pull all those friends down. You can see the associations that she's built with people through uh, transactions. So you get the point. So, um, and like I said, like uh, pivot around when you get on a Facebook page. You know, I would start with photos. I would start with any public info and then pivot from there. Maybe you can't find a specific person let's say their Facebook account is a completely different name or has a variation of their name. I've done this in the past with criminals, uh, but you're able to find a relative uh, through just very basic open source intelligence gathering. You know, that's them. You're able to see household names and then you find that household name. So let's say their brother, you go on the brother's Facebook, you're able to see reactions, comments, etc., on their account. And then you're able to pinpoint the Sorry, my cat my cats are fighting they came in here so but yeah you get the point it's all about pivoting finding more information digging a little bit deeper uh, sometimes you have to go through first second third and maybe fourth degree connections uh, on a subject to get what you want so anyways that is it for this video if y'all enjoy content like this please hit the thumbs up button hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification i think my next video i'm gonna give a unpaid for unsponsored video and shout out to graynoise.io and how to find actual live exploit activity online. I wouldn't say live, but exploit activity online uh, and try to debunk those attack maps you've probably have seen from time to time. So anyways, that is it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.